Here we go to the Garden of Eden and the sorrow of seeing Adam and Eve driven out of that beautiful place. Or whether we go to the story of Noah and the redemption which God accomplished for Noah, his wife, and his family. Whether we go to the stories that come from the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or whether we go to the very concluding chapters, the story of Joseph's life. They live large before our eyes. And I would want you to go to chapter 50 of Genesis with me today as we come to the very death of the great patriarch Jacob as well as Joseph's own death and what takes place sandwiched in between those two events in this concluding chapter. We read in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong which we did to him? So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father charged before he died, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, Please forgive, I beg you, the transgression of your brothers and their sin, for they did wrong you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, We are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in God's place? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. So therefore do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Hear this concluding episode in the dialogue and in the interaction between Joseph and his brothers is so beautiful, especially when we consider how rocky and how rough, how turbulent their interaction had been over so many years. We look back to the earlier chapters in Joseph's life and we realize how that he was the favorite of his father, having received a coat of many colors. And that coat was a symbol to his brothers of that love and as a result it was a symbol of their spite and of their hatred of him. And so we remember how that Joseph with rough hands is grabbed by his brothers, thrown into a pit in the wilderness, thinking that he would perish there. But then greed enters into their minds as they see some travelers, some business dealers going down into Egypt and they sell their very own brother that he might become a slave in a foreign land. And they seek to wipe him away from their thoughts. They lie to their father about what they have done. Taking that precious coat of many colors, dipping it in a lamb's blood, and bringing it to their father, him thinking that his beloved son had been torn apart by a wild beast. But Joseph going down there into Egypt, first serving in Potiphar's house, faithful even when tried and tempted as a result of misunderstanding and accusation thrown into jail but there also this man of sterling character shows that his trust was in the Lord that the Lord was watching over him his brothers come during a time of famine after Joseph has have has risen to such prominence the very two men in the country of Egypt, one of the greatest empires of the world in that time. And here this, his brothers come asking to purchase food, asking for the very privilege of being permitted to live. Joseph sells to them, but he treats them roughly and accuses them of being spies. He is testing them to see whether they had also dealt with his blood brother Benjamin as they had dealt with him. He finds out that here is something different, that there has come about a change. And especially when Judah comes and pleads for the very life of Benjamin, Joseph realizes that there was a great change. And so they all come. They are all cared for in the land of Egypt during the years of that famine and the years which would come thereafter. But now, Jacob having died, his brothers with their guilty conscience come 
and they wonder, what will Joseph now do, now that dad is gone? And here we have an indication, as the hymn writer sit, puts it, grace greater than all of our sin. Jesus, when he was being nailed to the cross, pleaded with his own heavenly father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus is forepictured in the life of Joseph, one of the most clear pictures in the Old Testament of what Jesus would be like. And here, just as Jesus would later plead out, Father, forgive them. Here, Joseph extends to his brothers grace greater than all of their sin. From this brief account, we learn a number of lessons so instructive for us today. Lesson number one, this story that his brothers concocted, entering Jacob into the picture it points out a guilty conscience is not cleansed by the passage of time. Here these men, that episode which had taken place so many years before, and so much kindness extended to them in the meantime, yet it lived large in their minds. A guilty conscience is not cleansed by the passage of time. But then as they come before Joseph, and as Joseph hears their words, we do not see that his brothers are weeping, but rather we are seeing that Joseph is the one pictured weeping. Oh, what a picture of Jesus hanging upon the cross, thinking of all of what he was bringing about, tears streaming down his face. Joseph weeping because of what his brothers had done. Oh, there was great pain in that episode, but God had brought about such difference. Lesson number three, sin will take you where you never expected to go. Here these brothers, they are coming now and falling before Joseph. Earlier in their life, they had thought that they would never, ever do such a thing. Through the dreams of Joseph, Joseph had said, you will come and bow down before me. Sin had worked its way into these men's lives, and now through their sin, they were thinking that they would be enslaved and in bondage, but grace was stretched out to them. Lesson number four, humble honesty. Joseph did not picture himself here in this episode as the second ruler in one of the mightiest nations of all the world of his day. He did not say to them, I could crush you as a bug, but he recognized that God's hand was at work in all of this. There was a humble honesty of yes, what his brothers had done, but yet of what God, more importantly, had brought about. Lesson number five, God watches over us and that for good. One of the most striking two words in all of the Bible are these two words here, but God. Joseph said, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good and brought about good in this episode. Lesson number six, and with this I conclude. Therefore, as a result of God working so powerfully in this situation and in so many other situations which you and I encounter, we are therefore freed to show kindness even to those who have spitefully mistreated us. God's grace is so wonderful, so deep, and so rich for each and every one of us. Once again, I refer to the hymn writer as he says, grace greater than all of our sin. God brings about, even out of the worst things that perhaps a family member would do, perhaps a friend or a co-worker or an acquaintance, so many people wonder, how can I forgive? How can something good come out of this? Oh, it's the power of God. It's the love of God. It is the grace and the kindness of God that brings about all of these things. And so, friends, we are able to move forward in praise of God's great and holy name. Pastor Bob.
Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. most exciting.